In our most recent Artistry Academy webinar, I asked members to let us know their ideas about how they keep their painting momentum going, and this was what they said. I hear from people, oh, I really want to paint, but I don't have the time. How come you're so good at keeping up with the painting? I wonder if any of you have any advice or experience. I'll start with me. I paint every single day. I paint all day. All day and all night. And even when I'm not painting, I wish I was painting. And the first thing I'll think of if I want to take a break is painting. <laughs> so, so that's why I'm so prolific because I paint all the time and I love it. But I don't think I'm normal. That's to go without saying. I'm not normal because I know how to do all this stuff. And I think that's one thing that holds people back is that if you don't know how to do it, every time you sit down to do it, it's another learning curve. So I think that might be one of the things that holds people back. So does anybody have anything to say about how they get over this learning curve? If you <clears throat> have any words of advice, I would be- I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, Momo. <laughs> I'm like you. I paint. I wake up, turn the computer on, and start painting when I get, I get up and have my cup of tea, a cup of tea or coffee, and I'm planning what I'm going to paint. Um, then I do all the Photoshop edits, like um, extending the the canvas or um, give it. I'll give the the photo that's corrections like um, levels and then I know that's um, ready for me to paint and I pop them into um, a new folder and I call them Momo's paintings and then I can just choose one and go straight ahead and paint. The end. <laughs> so you know I'm finished. <laughs> Thanks for telling us that you're kind of mm -hmm. like me. You just just by rote, you just sit down and start every day. Every and day, just, every night. And every night. Tea. And you love it, right? I enjoy it. I can't get enough. Kicking. That's the way I am. And That's what I'm somebody... saying to you. When I'm yeah. sending you emails, this is my fifth or sixth go. I can't get this right. I'm off again. Oh, I'm learning by the, what I call them mistakes. I could act because you could correct the mistake lock with the background. And then once the background's complete, I can I could paint the subject to how it is, how I want it to be. Yeah. Well, that's another thing, even after doing it all this time, that's another thing that I've run into as well, too. Not everyone is a winner. No. I have a lot of false starts. <laughs> to me, it's kind of fun to experiment and see where where something goes but all right so that's the first the first answer to my question about um that's what makes you momo so yes. prolific because you are interested in doing it every day like i said i think a lot of people just don't have the time for whatever reason so you're also like me that you make the time thank you for letting us know your process i think it's cool that's the thing that gets you going in the morning is, is getting into yes. the, at camera raw and, and fixing those tones i think that's cool and then i'm i'm back every day um and my hubby says your cereal's on, so I'll, I'll stop it and then I'll go and watch my cereal on telly and then I'll be starting to fall asleep and then I'll come back again. Oh, I didn't finish this bit and then off I'll go. So I'm constantly um, like you on the painting. That's the way I am too. And, you know, hmm. it's interesting too because even with the painting, I'm not always just starting over. If I'm working on something and I work on things for days and sometimes – you know, at four in the afternoon, something looks one way and it's just not coming together the way I want it to. And I'll go and I'll go grocery shopping and I'll come back and I'll go, oh, this is what I was supposed to do. And then I'll paint yeah, on it some break. more till eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. You know, it's I, I'll, I'll paint in, in spurts like that because I find that when you walk away from something, you get an idea of what you should do next. So maybe mm -hmm. that would help people too that aren't able. Walk away. To, and then yeah, come walk back. away and come back. Maybe that's another suggestion. Maybe people are thinking that they have to get it all done in one sitting. And that I find is not possible. I There's never been a time. Unfortunately, I wish I could 
that's something I, I try to do, but it never happens. I can never sit down and do a painting and just sit and do it and it's done. That's never the way it is. No. It's always coming back to it and coming back to it. So that's an interesting point too. So anybody else have any ideas about this? If Because Paul and Monty, you're also very prolific. Is there any kind of thought that you have that might encourage people to paint more? Is there anything that you find about painting that gets you keeps you doing it i'm i'm not very disciplined but i do like to i sort of go in spurts so i'll do a whole bunch but i never finish anything i have all these projects started and so it's kind of a mood thing but the biggest thing i find is I'm kind of overwhelmed by the choices and so what i do is i just have a you know a whole bunch of brushes that we've done different courses with I have them open and um, I'll, I'll start playing with that to see where I go. And if I can get start that, then I can get into it. But I can't always do that. It's almost like exercise. One thing yeah. about exercise, <laughs> I don't want to do exercise ever, 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 ever. And then I always feel so much better after it's over. <laughs> yes. I'm always so happy that I did it. So there is that like getting started, starting up the engine part where you just are yes. not motivated and you don't feel like it. But if you make yourself do it, maybe that's another thing that, that people, because I, I definitely can relate to that too. I mean, you know, you put it off because it's, it is. And you said with all the choices and everything, it's overwhelming. It's not you know, I guess people want to think that there's that like somebody who's been doing this a long time sits down and does it. But actually, there's a lot of that trying to start the motor of every in every the beginning of every painting. And that's another thing that actually cracks me up, because mm -hmm. you would think that I would have a step by step process. You do this, this, this and this and this and this and the painting is done. And actually, that's not what happens. What happens is, is that no. every single painting has a new set of 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 uh, problems to solve and so it, every single time it is starting off i guess if you compare it to a motor it is starting the motor cold it's not like the motor's been yeah. running and it's it's not always easy but it is like exercise that if you make yourself think about it and try to work on it it is more pleasurable than if you just keep putting it off and it's that nagging feeling in the back of your mind when you're doing something else. Gee, I should be painting. So that's yeah, and sometimes too. it's so easy, and sometimes it's not. <laughs> I don't know. And when it's not, you just keep going anyway. Hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, and sometimes when it's not, that's when I'll go. I, I kind of do what Momo is doing. I'll I'll work on just finding photos that maybe I'm interested in painting. And so build that catalog and get them ready to start doing it. Well, that's something I do that. also, because that gets you interested. And I'll tell you what also gets yes. me interested is I just have to look at paintings online and I get all motivated all over again to do my own. So that's you've talked about that and I've, I've done that more than I used to. And, and yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah, that helps. I, Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Momo and Monty. Paul, anything else that you want to think about saying for people to get them motivated to paint that, that you have found? Well, I'd like to tell what I've experienced. Because of the time of the year, we were in the great Northwest, June, July, August, and it was gardening, 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 helping, helping, helping. I had to finally declare, and I sent you that note, Karen, I, you gotta give me Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. You can quilt, meaning my wife, you can quilt anytime you want. You just up and do it. But I can't just up and do it because you're having me do this and that. And that isn't to say that's bad. It's just that it, it's the way it is and, and you gotta help. So being that I finally said that, and I don't remember when I sent that note, I think it was July or August, <laughs> made a big difference. 
And so, oh, it's Tuesday. Oh, you going to oil paint? Yes, I do. So I sit down and it may be only an hour, might be three hours. Oh, really? Yes, because you get involved. And as you know, you get into it. And um, that isn't quite right. Oh, well, let me do it. Oh, yes, this is, oh, this is better. And then you go on and on. But uh, I, I did pick three days, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And that I could, but you know, speaking of the great Northwest, so the garden's done. And what happens in the great Northwest? It rains. It'll start raining in the next week or two, and it ain't going to quit until, oh, I don't know, March. So you get a lot more things done inside. Mm -hmm. I may have more time. Hello. <laughs> and my wife will make more quilts and I'll be painting while she's while I'm I'm painting on my paper while she's doing her quilts. By the way, she has 19 quilts done. Really? That's cool. Okay. Oh, I so, really ran. Thank you. I, that's <laughs> but that's interesting. So now we have three specific things for people to think about for Momo's yeah, suggestion, yeah. although it wasn't really a suggestion, it's just the way she does it. She just focuses on what she loves to do when she sits down. And that's maybe something for people to think about. I'll tell you, I can relate to that because the I said that I'm not a photographer and it's not the camera raw that I'm starting with. But what I do do is... I get started by not painting anything. I like oh. to doodle. I like to just pick up brushes and just see what they do and just paint with them and just mush color and mush texture around. And I find that is very freeing. Maybe not be so intimidated that you have to paint this painting. To just sit there and just give yourself, it reminds me of being like a child and finger painting. And you just sit down and just smush the the paint around. And how much fun was that? I mean, so that's, so, you know, I love to just sit there and smush paint around. But Mo Momo loves to sit there and fiddle with camera raw settings, which is perfectly cool. But the the theory then would be to for someone who's having trouble getting started, just do what you love about it and just get, get started with something. And then Monty's suggestion is sometimes it's, it's hard to get started. Sometimes it's easy to get started. Just get started. Just don't, just don't think about how over, how, how you said about the choices and how it can be so overwhelming and, it's almost like just shut your brain off, just go, just sit there and just do it. And then Paul's interesting suggestion was if you, for the people who, because I know people are busy, for the people who are, are, who feel very busy, just give yourself a schedule. I'm going to paint every Tuesday at, at 6 p.m. And that's it. And you, you said, even if you get an hour in, at least you've gotten an hour in. And I think that's a, a good thing to, to think about as well. So I, I, I appreciate you guys letting us in on your thinking about painting. That was very interesting. Thank you, guys. Anybody else have anything else to add? It looks like you do, Myra. Hi, Myra. How are you? Yes, I do. Hi. Fine. Good. I hope everyone is well. Yeah, my time, my problem is time crunch Yeah. because I work. But, however, no, I don't like it, but, but however, um, I find that if I have a journal, like, um, I'm going to be doing this, I'm going to be working on this painting, and I write down, or even a lesson, I write down what I have done, and write down what I plan to do for the next time that I have a little bit of time. I, I get to it. I get to it. I know where I'm at. I don't have to think, okay, where was, did I leave off? No. Uh, so that's that's the only thing. 
That's a, a great point. And I do the same exact thing. I also have a journal and I actually, I started, it's a journal slash to-do list. And I actually started because I was thinking of things that were flying out of my head. And I, it's just like you just said. And then I would look back and say, there was something I wanted to do. What was it? I don't remember. And if I've always had fl fleeting thoughts about everything I want to do. And it's true. If you just, I have a to-do list that's a million miles long. And I do, mm -hmm. I, I keep putting on it. This is what I have to do. This is next. This is next. This is next. And that's another excellent way, I think, to to get motivated because you look at what you you look at what you thought of doing and you say, yeah, I really do want to do that. It's not something I don't want to do. It's something I really want to do. And so you try to figure it out. So yeah, you, you're working, so it's hard to find the time. But what did you think about Paul's thought that maybe you could just tell yourself, okay, one hour on Saturday at such and such a time is when I'm going to do it. Does that work for you? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there you have your first solution right there. So good. So, okay, this is terrific. I appreciate all of your feedback. Mm -hmm.